I went to a bolt action tournament and I ended up in the last place. It doesn't matter because they give me this. Who's laughing now? All right, now I have three Warlord games, Hellcat tank destroyers, ready to be assembled, painted and weathered in just one weekend. So we have to seek, strike and destroy. Building three tanks at the same time can be crazy. So I'm going one by one and step by step. So it's important to use plastic glue to prevent any piece to come in loose later. I use the cutting pliers to separate the pieces from the sprue and then carefully remove the cesses with a sharp blade. Another enemy that we have to avoid is the fingerprint on the glue. These models are not very complicated to build, but the tracks, always the tracks. Let's not forget our crew. I will not put them in the tour jet, not to encounter difficulties to paint them later. So we prepare them to print and we take a walk. Nice, the Hellcats are already primed. But before we paint them, I'm gonna change the antennas of them. I don't like them, I think they are too thick. And I'm gonna use the old broom trick. We're gonna take one strand to make the antennas with them. With pliers, we cut off the old antennas and leave the old base. We stick the broom sedas to each tank. The main color I will use for the tanks is violet brown. It belongs to the Panzer Ace series. But keep in mind that model color range has the same reference 70887 and we can use either of them, no matter. Okay, we are going to try to give a very thin layers of paint as not to cover any detail until we cover the entire tank. We will have to add three or four layers so that the color is solid. One problem I found in these models is painting inside the turret. That metal bar is an obstacle. After I call them tanks, these vehicles are not tanks, they are tank destroyers. They lack of the ammo, but in this change, for more speed and higher caliber 76mm cannon. For the trucks, I still don't have the technique that I think that is the definitive technique. Okay, so once the tanks have a solid color, I'm going to give them a layer of matte varnish. So this resists the tapping of the dry bruise in the next step. And for that, I'm using the Vallejo Mecha Varnish. This is matte varnish. Okay, so once it's dry, I begin to apply the inks all over the tank with a thin layer of bronze shadow and leaving a little excesses in the details. Also play it a little bit with black inks and dark green inks here and there. And our tank is ready for us to start giving the lights to 
We start with our lights, we go on back to our original color and start tapping to create the gradient. This is the US Olive Drop. This tapping reminds me one of the old tutorial from Bob Ross in which he painted an oil painting tapping on the canvas and he said that it was like to play in a native drum. So we're gonna do a lot of drumming today. <laughs> to raise the light, we add some yellow and we do the process again. But for the highlight, here I will not to add more yellow. I, I think it's better to add white for the highest light. This highlight, we can also outline them with a thin brush. Oh my god, my brush is enfermo! We are getting those intense contrast and modulation effect. I'll achieve it with brush. The things, the things you do when you don't have an eyebrow. brass is very helpful to express any excess of paint here and there. Yes, my favorite part, oils. I love working with oils. The way that they behave is very different from the inks and tints and the final effect it brings much more market saturation and contrast than the inks. I think each one has his place in, in the painting. For the track, I use a little bit of sienna and black. Mix it up. So we paint all the details in the three tanks, all the metallics, the wooden pieces, and the tracks, and the wheels. These vehicles wired in hiding for the recon to inform them of enemy locations. This translates in destroyer more vehicles than casualties suffered. I still have to paint our crew, our brave men, paint their uniforms, all the details. Uh, well, I made an attempt to do it but it's so small. Anyway, they're gonna be inside of the turret, so you will hardly be able to see them. Doesn't matter. Next step, the decal. I think the decals are what most require to research when finishing our model. We don't want to put the wrong decals or put them in the wrong places or where they're not supposed to be. So this requires some investigation, look a little bit on the web, 
check the models on the box. Also, this is not necessary at all. Finally ready, big project here. Our M18 are ready for battle, are ready to go and cruise some Tiger tanks in their way. They were really fun to paint and build and I hope you liked the video and this to push you to paint your own tanks and have fun doing it like I did. And if you like it, please consider subscribe. It helps a lot, so thank you very much and see you next time, bye.